over the last month, uh, there's been a really big push uh, to have a peer-to-peer -peer pool uh, mining Monero. And so this can be found on p2pool.io. And I checked this morning, and it's now up to 3% of the Monero hash rate. Can you give it just a quick overview of what P2 pool is, why it matters for Monero, why this is so cool? You know, give us a rundown. Sure. It's, it's like combining the best of both worlds between pooled mining and solo mining, right? Because uh, you, get, you get to join your hash rate with other miners like you do in a pool, but uh, every miner constructs their own block uh, template, block headers, and they mine their own blocks. So it's like solo mining. And the reason this is important is it means there's no single entity in control of all of the blocks being generated, right? Um, so, you know, even if P2 pool gets popular enough to have over 50% of that network hash rate, there's actually no danger of a 51% attack because, you know, each block is still being generated by individual miners. Uh, and all of this work is, you know, this code was written from scratch by uh, S. Chernick, uh, although the idea for P2 pool, you know, was already around in Bitcoin. Like, just like other things that, that Monero has adopted that first came out for Bit, Bitcoin, but didn't either didn't make it there or were never adopted. So Bitcoin's P2 pool had a big problem in that um, it, it was always, or is, there's a high frequency of orphaned blocks, right? The, the way P2 pool works is everybody is mining on a side chain and the rate of blocks on the side chain is much faster than the main chain. You know, it could be, one every 10 seconds, one every 30 seconds, whatever, compared to one every 10 minutes for the Bitcoin uh, main chain. And uh, when you're emitting blocks that fast, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of tendency for multiple miners to collide and um, uh, cause chain forks on the side chain. And so in Bitcoin's P2 pool, when that happens, you know, whichever block <clears throat> loses on the reorg, it's just wasted hash rate. And uh, S. Chernick fixed this in the Monero implementation by adopting what he calls uncle blocks. So uncles um, are, are <laughs> parents, uncles of the orphan blocks, and uh, they allow some value of the orphan blocks to be retained. In this case, I think it's 20%. So not all of that hash rate is wasted. And this way we can still maintain a very fast block rate on the side chain, which I think in, in the current one is one, one every 10 seconds. While, um, so while all, all I'm hearing is that we've made, we've made Monero into Ethereum, this is, is what I'm hearing, is that correct? That's right, we, we adopted the uncle block technique from Ethereum, that's right. But you know, I mean, you, you can't say we made Monero Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it anyway, so this, this this has been working out really well. In fact, you know, we had one percent of the Monero network hash rate within the first week of our testing. Uh, so it's it's actually been um, you know meeting and exceeding our expectations. It's been, it's been some cool stuff. No, that's fantastic. I'm glad that I, every time I check, it's just more and more of the hash rate, and it's not like Monero's hash rate's decreasing much. It's still a general trend up. So it's Thanks. it's clearly gotten a lot of people's interest, and it's it's great that it's. You know, it's seemingly worked out so well so far. Would you, would you agree, or do you think that there's still quite a few bugs that need to be need to be fixed? No, in the past, you know, in the past week or so, it's been working really smoothly. You know, we of course had some hiccups in the first one or two weeks of testing, um, but actually, you know, the initial test on testnet went pretty smoothly, and then we transitioned to mainnet with just a small handful of participants, and now we've opened up to you know the network at large. Uh, it's been working really well. Um, and, you know, so some of these other benefits that I forgot to mention, you know, it, there's, there is no custodial pool wallet, right? Every, every payout comes directly from the Coinbase transaction of a Monero block. So, you know, there's, there's no way that anybody else can run away with the funds or, you know, do a, do an exit scam on you. It's... I saw that uh, some, it says that only certain wallets support the P2P payouts, and this is the the you know the wallets that most people support. So, what's the backstory behind that? Why might some wallets not properly show a payout? So, <clears throat> there was a quote optimization unquote 
<laughs> that was added to the wallet code back when, um, I think back when Ring CT was first introduced. And that optimization was that um, for, for any transactions that were newer than, you know, the original CryptoNote transactions, which had multiple outputs, it would only look at one output in a Coinbase transaction. And so, okay. Okay. Um, you know, and so now, you know, since we're, since P2 pool is paying out every individual miner in the Coinbase transaction, you know, the Coinbase transaction can have uh, 30, 40, or hundreds of outputs in it now. And so with the, with the old optimization in place, a wallet would only see the first output and ignore all the rest of them. Now that was patched in the latest 17.2.3 release. Uh, so, you know, the CLI was updated immediately. I think both Monterujo and Cake Wallet have now been updated. Um, if there's any other third party wallets, I'm not aware of them. Does this mean that all, all users are scanning all the outputs in the Coinbase? Well, they always were. It's just that usually there was only one to look at. Um, Got it. Yeah, that, that's an interesting yeah. optimization that I totally forgot about. <laughs> and I should yeah. note. Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, I should note that because the Coinbase transaction is not, um, it has none of the privacy technologies on it. You can actually do this. The limitation on um, bulletproof um, of sixteen outputs does, wouldn't apply, because there is a built-in limitation for regular transactions where you wouldn't be able to have 30 outputs on a Monero transaction, but because it's a Coinbase transaction, this works. That's right. On the, the other thing, you know, that, that Arctic Mind just touched on, uh, you know, the outputs in the Coinbase transaction are not encrypted, right? So uh, there's, actually, there's no privacy on those. So one of the things about this is uh, you should be P2 pool mining to a separate dedicated mining wallet. Got it. Andres, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I just wanted to ask a question for HYC. If if uh, you can explain a bit more, what's the um, what's the role of pools in peer to pool mining comparing compared to the regular pools that we are used to to use? Well, um, I mean, still because it's, still... it's sort of like a very decentralized uh, mining system, so people sometimes ask why. What was the role of the pool itself? The pool is, I mean, it's not really a pool, right? It's it's an entire side blockchain, right? And um, basically, the blockchain there is recording all of the shares that you know miners submit. And there's a okay. window. There's a there's a sliding window um, across these blocks, which determines who gets paid. You know if if a main chain Monero block is found and uh, and your shares are within the current window, then you will get a payout in that block. Mm -hmm. There's only one of those chains and there can be multiple chains. Oh, well, there can be as many as you like. You know, I mean, it's just like there can be many pools. Yeah. But what's, what's the, I mean, what are the pros and cons of having one or several or too many pools or too many chains like that? I, I don't really think there's a, such a thing as too many chains, just like there's no such thing as too many pools, right? Um, mm -hmm. The the trade-off is that, you know, the, the more pools there are, then the smaller the hash rate per pool there can be. And the smaller the hash rate, then the longer it takes to find a main chain block. Yeah, eventually so, you, it tends to solo mining basically. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, there is a trade-off here also in that the amount of outputs that you put out per uh, block. So there's a, there's gonna, there's end of, it seems to me there's going to be a balance between um, sending large amounts of very small outputs and getting more frequent payments. So uh, I would expect there'd be some kind of optimal result where you have multiple chains and balancing those two out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, I think right now the you know the average single share payout is something like 0 0.003 XMR. Um, 
or maybe zero 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 three. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there there is a lower bound to to the size of an output that you want to generate. And there's someone like in charge of running those those separate blockchains, or it's just like like a protocol and well, everybody okay. that is running the, the mining is Every, everybody who participates has to run yeah. their own copy of the P2 pool software, mm -hmm. and so that is like another. Uh, I mean, you know, it has a stratum server on it, so it's like a pool server. It talks directly to Monero D, so it's it's like an add-on to a Monero D node. And what's the incentive for people to do it this way instead of the regular? I, I know what's the incentive for the Monero network <laughs> to make it more decentralized, but what is the incentive for people to jump into the P2 pool instead of the regular mining? Well, you get uh, fees or you get your rewards paid directly to your wallet. So there's no custodial mm -hmm. wallet. Uh, there are no transaction fees anywhere, right? So you get your Coinbase payout immediately. There's no pool fee, there's no you know, tax or anything on it. So all things equal is more profit, basically. Yes. Perfect, thanks. I do have a question. How do you determine multiple chains on uh, like multiple pools on the P2P uh, pool software? Well, each, each side chain is independent, right? And the only thing that matters is who's first to find the main chain block. So you define a particular chain that you're going to join? Yes, you know, there's that, there's a config file that just says, you know, here's my chain name, and anybody else who configures the same chain name will be on the same side chain as you. Okay, so if you wanted a different chain name, then you would have a different side chain. Yes. And effectively a different pool. Yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we got all those good questions and thank you, HYC, for just answering them back to back to back. None of them came in through the, the uh, watchers, though. So if you have any questions, make sure you get those in and we can pass those along. Um, any other final comments or questions on P2 pool at the moment or should we move on to some other things? All right. Well, I think everyone's excited that this is something that is, I mean, 3% doesn't sound like that much, but it's still brand new and it is working well and it's pretty substantial. Like it, it, it's very cool to see people adopt this because it does substantially assist with decentralization. Um, because centralized mining pools are like kind of something you just kind of have to deal with in the past, but now it's, it's good that people have a good option that you could reliably earn blocks from now, right? So you, you can actually mine a block every so often. 